Hey, good morning, everybody. It is Thursday morning, the 17th of February, 2022. Welcome to the Morning Watch. Today we're going to be in one chapter in the book of Psalms, Psalm 89. And um, so give us, folks a few seconds to get in. Let us know you're here. If you've got any prayer requests, please put those in the chat. So Psalm 89 is written by Ethan the Ezraite. So this is another name that we have not seen yet um, in our reading of Psalms. He is attributed as the author of Psalm 89, and it's a big chapter, so I want to get into it as quick as we can. Um, so let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll get started. Lord, we just we just come to you this morning, Lord, thankful, um, thankful that you've um, you've blessed us with life this morning. We woke up, we've we got our day started, Lord. And we're just thankful for all that you're going to do today. Um, the things that are going to happen today that we don't know about, but you know what those are. And we laid those at your feet, the things that we know about, things that we don't know about. And we just pray as we study this morning that you would show us what you would have us to see and that we can take with us, Lord, speak to our hearts, speak to our spirits, wake up our minds, and uh, let us see things today, Lord, that we can apply to bring us closer to your Son. We love you, Lord, and we ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. So, who else here? There's uh, Kim, and there's my sister, Glenna. Yes, Diane, good morning. Lots of wind. I'm feeling a little better. My voice is still not great. I got a little headache this morning again. So, uh, but I feel a lot better than I did. There's LaDonna. There's my mom, my sister. Uh, who else here? I think that's it. All right, and Shirley. Good morning, Shirley and Wilma. All right. So let's read Psalm 89. He says, I will sing of the loving kindness of the Lord forever. To all generations, I'll make known your faithfulness with my mouth. Okay. Got to talk about it, Ethan says. You got to talk about it. You can't keep it secret because his loving kindness is amazing. It says, for I have said loving kindness will be built up forever. We've already seen the word loving kindness two times already. In the heavens, you will establish your faithfulness. And he did. Okay. All the things that we know, the covenants, they greet, the, all the things that we know that God has made, the promises that he has made were established in the heavens. Verse 3, I've made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your seed forever. I will build up your throne to all generations. We know that the line, the kingly line through David and Solomon and all the subsequent generations were a forerunner to Christ. And we know that it's ultimately Christ sitting on the throne for all of eternity that will that will establish David's throne forever. Selah says. Verse 5. The heavens will praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness also in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies is comparable to the Lord? No one. <laughs> who among the sons of the mighty is like the Lord? No one, right? A God greatly feared in the counsel of the holy ones and awesome above all those who are around him. O oh, Lord, God of hosts, who is like you, O oh, mighty Lord? No one. It says your faithfulness also surrounds you. Your faithfulness. His faithfulness surrounds him. It does. He is so faithful. Verse 9. You rule the swelling of the sea when its waves rise. You still them. Yeah, God's in control of everything. Nature, even the wind, Diane, right? says, for you yourself crushed Rahab, that's Egypt, like one who is slain. You scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. God is strong. He is strong. The heavens are yours. Look, now, this is huge. Look at verse 11. There's nothing that doesn't belong to him. There's nothing that doesn't fall under his dominion and his authority. Verse 11, the heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The world and all it contains, you have founded them. The north and the south, you've created them. Tabor and Hermon shout for joy at your name. All the compass points belong to him everywhere, east, west, north, and south. And it says, um, you have, verse 13, you have a strong arm. Your hand is mighty. Your right hand is exalted. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Amen. Love and kindness and truth go before you. How blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. Oh, Lord, they walk in the light of your countenance, your face. They, they, they walk in the light of your face, it says. 
And it says, in your name they rejoice all the day, and by your righteousness they are exalted. For you are the glory of their strength. And by your favor our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord. Our shield is his. And our king to the Holy, God, Holy One of Israel. Once you spoke in vision to your godly ones and said, I've given help to one who is mighty. I've exalted one chosen from the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him, with whom my hand will be established. My arm also will strengthen him. The enemy will not deceive him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. But I shall crush his adversaries before him and strike those who hate him. My faithfulness and my loving kindness will be with him. And in my name his horn will be exalted. I shall also set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He will cry to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I also shall make him my firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. My loving kindness I will keep for him forever, and my covenant shall be confirmed to him. So I will establish his descendants forever and his thrones as the days of heaven. We know here that God is ultimately writing about Jesus. Okay, he's using the, the, the Davidic line to establish it, but ultimately that can only come through the person of Jesus. So when you hear in those verses that we just read, those last 10 verses or so, you hear him, him, referring to him, that is Jesus ultimately. Verse 30, if his sons forsake my law and do not walk in my judgments, if they violate my statutes and do not keep my commandments, this is God speaking. It says that I will punish their transgression with the rod and their, their iniquity with stripes. So it says that if, if, if my people don't live according to my commandments, then there will be consequences. Okay? That's how it is with parents and children. Discipline. You, you don't discipline your children because you hate them. You discipline your children because you love them. Okay? So it's important that they will be disciplined. And, but watch this, look at verse 33. But I will not break off my loving kindness from him, nor deal falsely in my faithfulness. It's impossible for God to act counter to his character. If God makes a promise, it will be honored. God never goes back on his promises, ever. Okay? It says here, My covenant I will not violate, nor will I alter the utterance of my lips. Just what we just said. God is not going to ever go against what he said. He can. It's impossible. It says, once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His descendants shall endure forever, and his throne is the sun before me. It shall be established forever like the moon, and the witness in the sky is faithful. Selah. Okay? Just, again, reminding us of the faithfulness of God. Verse 38, but you have cast off and rejected. You've been full of wrath against your anointed. You have spurned the covenant of your servant. You have profaned his crown in the dust. You've broken down all his walls. You've brought his strongholds to ruin. All who pass along the way plunder him. He's become a reproach to his neighbors. You have exalted the right hand of his adversaries. You've made all of his enemies rejoice. You also turned back the edge of his sword and have not made him stand in battle. You made his splendor to cease and cast his throne to the ground. You've shortened the days, excuse me, of his youth. You've covered him with shame. Say a lot. So Ethan here is writing about all these things are true, but right now we are living in a time when we are being disciplined. Okay, um, Israel had gotten plundered and the children of Israel taken into captivity, and they're living in a time of consequence. Sin has consequence, all right? There's no such thing as a, a minor sin in the eyes of God, okay? All sins are a reproach to him. Why? Because he is holy. He is perfect. He's righteous and he's just. It is impossible for God to overlook or ignore sin. Okay, so that's what we see there in 38 through 45. We see reality. Okay, God is a God of love. The Bible literally says God is love. But we also know that God 
is a God who is, he is a jealous God. He wants us to be with him. That's why we were created, was to honor and glorify and worship him. Verse 46, how long, O Lord, will you hide yourself forever? Will your wrath burn like fire? Remember what my span of life is. For what vanity you've created all the sons of men. What men can live and not see death? N none of us. Death is inevitable. Can he deliver his soul from the power of Sheol? Selah. Verse 49. And we are close to being done with this. <coughs> Excuse me. Where are your former loving kindnesses, O Lord? So a lot of times when you're in the middle of a bind, you're in the middle of a, of, of a, of a time of rebellion or... Um, uh, personal sin or or whatever, it's hard to see the loving kindness of God. But that doesn't mean it isn't there. In fact, con to the contrary. We just can't see it. The sin prevents us from really understanding and being aware of what God is doing. Okay? It says, where are your, where are your former loving kindnesses, O Lord, which you swore to David in your faithfulness? Remember, O Lord, the reproach of your servants. How I bear in my bosom the reproach of all the many peoples with which your enemies have reproached, O Lord, with which they have reproached the footsteps of your anointed. And then he ends by saying, Blessed be the Lord forever. Amen and amen. So you see here acknowledgement of the faithfulness and the loving kindness and the goodness of God the power of God, the all-reaching arms of God, the strong arm of God, the fact that God, everything is under his authority. You see that. But then you also see this acknowledgement of we know that what we are going through is because of our lack of faith, because of our disobedience. Okay? And he's saying, how long, Lord, will you withhold that from us? Okay? That's the, that's the, that's the, that's the thing that we see. So I love you all. That went quicker than I anticipated. Um, let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll, who all came in after we start? There's Ken Amon. Hey, there's Sherry. Okay, please pray for Lisa and my grandson Preston. He has COVID. All right, we, we certainly will. All right. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for all your many blessings, Lord. We want to lift up Lisa to you and Preston. And Lord, thank you for your love and kindness this morning, Lord. Thank you for your word. We love you, and we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, y'all. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. We'll be in Psalm 90 and 91 tomorrow. Have a great day.